Om Namah Shivaya students today we are going to start with class 11 legal study unit 5 part 5 family justice system student in number 1 the role of the woman in creation of family courts role of lawyer and counselors in family courts role of counselors and gender issues this will be followed with the assignment related to this session that is unit 5 part role of women in creation of family courts women associations we had a uh, uh, mention we had made the mention of uh, the women association in the previous uh, topic of this chapter and this unit women associations are the associations formed uh, for the utilization of the rights of the women this organization have played a critical role in the creation of family courts In the 1980s the women right movement groups were vocal about legislative reforms such as creation of special courts to deal with family matters to curb violence against women including rape dowry harassment and wife murder these issues of the gender justice were an important motivating factor for the creation of the family courts accordingly family courts aimed at creating women friendly courts procedure that were less formal and more accessible to women especially those from the marginalized section for this the family courts intended to rely less on the traditional lawyers and to depend more or more on counselors to help the parties to dispute to reach at mutually an uh, amicable solution the conciliators were to increase the power of negotiation of women in reconciliation the settlement in uh, issues such as quantum of maintenance upon divorce custody and access of children protection against diamond, uh, domestic violence and the right of the residents in the matrimonial home now uh, the role of the woman if we are uh, talking about in the creation of the family courts it is the uh, important role played by the women association and organization for the formation of courts in the districts now the need to establish the family court was first emphasized by Srimati Durga Bai Deshmukh after her visit to China in the year 1853 so uh, the women association if we talk about it is the first need uh, of the family court was first emphasized by the late Srimati Durga Bai Deshmukh after her visit to China in the year 1853 where she had the opportunity to study the working of the family courts she discussed the subject with honorable justice uh with honorable mr justice mc chagla of bombay high court and also honorable mr justice pb gajendra gadkar then the judge bombay high court she also discussed the matter of the setting up of the family court with the then prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru several women associations welfare organization and individuals also mounted pressure for setting up of the family courts to provide a forum for speedy settlement of the family related disputes the emphasis was on the non adversarial method of resolving family disputes and promoting conciliation and securing speedy settlement of dispute relating to the marriage and family affairs in the creation of the country and uh, creation of the family court by the women
the need to establish the family court was first emphasized by Srimati Durga Bai Deshmukh after a visit to China. And uh, she discussed the subject with Honorable Justice Mr. M.C. Chagla of Bombay High Court and also the Honorable Mr. Justice P.B. Gajendra Gadkar and the then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Several women associations, welfare organizations and individuals also mounted pressure for setting up of the family courts to provide a forum for speedy settlement of the family related disputes. The emphasis was on a non-adversarial method of resolving family dispute and promoting conciliation and securing speedy settlement of dispute relating to marriage and family affairs. A role of lawyers and counsellors in family courts. The family court, acts, um, the family court act restricts the role of lawyers and enhances the use of counsellors in the dispute resolution to encourage mutually amicable settlements. This is peculiar as well as contrary to the which commonly employ the English legal method of practice called the adversarial system of adjudication. In the adversarial system of adjudication, the judge plays the role of a neuter arbiter and decides based on the merits of the case presented to him her by the lawyers of the opposing parties. The Family Court Act limits the role of the lawyer as legal experts or amicus curiae who the courts may consult for opinion. The act does away with the lawyers with the hope to prevent excessive litigation cost, corruption, manipulative and subversive tactics, extended and bitter court battles and refusal to settle or compromise, and so on. However, critics have argued that lawyers are necessary to help clients with complex cases and court procedures in which the counselors may not have that kind of expertise. Moreover, there has been no mechanism created to ensure the availability of amicus curiae or legal experts for the constant needs of the court. Accordingly, family courts have routinely allowed lawyers to represent clients. As described earlier, the Family Court Act has given the counselors high preferences over lawyers in the Family Court in order to promote efforts for settlement between the parties. However, in practice, the role of counselor is mere superficial. Majority of the state do, do not adequately integrate the requirement of the counselors with the legal practice of the family courts. The role of the counselors is limited to the task of ascertaining if the dispute can be reconciled or corrected. And even this not beyond the preliminary stage and not in the actual trial of the case. The situation of the counselor in court practice is a new idea and neither the judges nor the lawyers are oriented to this concept. Now, there exists a wide disparity among states with respect to the process adopted to appoint the counselors, their qualifications and remunerations, their role and the counseling techniques employed. While some states have used non-governmental organizations as counselors, others have used trained personal individual volunteers as well as lawyers. In the role of counselors. Now, a role of counselors and gender issues. There are few states such as Maharashtra where counselors play a considerable role in promoting negotiations and settlements 
Women groups contend that counselors should be trained with gender sensitivity as a neutral stance of counselors usually ends up being anti-woman. Influenced by long-standing patriarchal biases against women. Patriarchal biases means the differences based on the male-dominated male-dominated society against women. The women groups have demanded clearly defined frameworks for gender justice in the practice of the family courts, especially with respect to the roles of the counselors in order to avoid gender biases in the process of fulfilling the statute mandate of speedy settlement and protect and preserve the family. For example, in order, in order to accomplish the mandate of reconciliation, that means recorrection, some counselors coerce or force women to uh, reconcile and return to the spouse, uh, spousal home. That means uh, the home of the husband. Disregarding women's human dignity, physical safety and economic rights. In other instances where women have been physically abused and thrown out of their matrimonial homes and have demanded maintenance under section 125 of the criminal procedure code. The counselors and the lawyers have regularly and successfully sought a reconciliation, which is argued to be a legal trick that undermines women's claim to maintenance. Under section 125 of the criminal procedure code is a safeguard that makes maintenance mandatory for neglected children and women. Likewise, family issues are nuanced and have legal complexities. Gender sensitivity may help counselors to not merely take neutral positions, but also consider the unequal power relationship between men and women in reconciliation and settlement processes. Now, one of the major criticism by the women group about the family court and the family justice system as a whole is that the conceptual basis of the gender justice, the prime objective of the uh, women's movement is left out. Instead, the Family Court uh, Act focuses on preservation of the family through conciliation and in a speedy manner. Women group have always maintained that preservation of the family is not synonymous with the gender justice or rights of the woman. Assignment that has to be done in Unit 5, Part 5 need for family courts a role of counselors and gender sensitivity these questions has been discussed in the session today go through in your fair copy in the next session unit 5 part 6 family justice system we will continue with om namah shivaya